Hello world. As you can well hear, I'm sick. And I just decided that I will take advantage of this beautiful state that the fever gives you because it actually it's a very religious state, you know, a very Christian one. Fever makes you unable to lie. You basically tell everybody the truth and what you really think and feel. Yay! So, I decided to make that video on what I truly believe about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that I am proudly a member of. I won't be praising that church and its members and leaders for everything they do because it will be a waste of time. I don't think that way. Um, and that's it. And it's not my duty. I'm also not a professional missionary. I don't want to be. Uh, so that's uh, the point, basically, even if it were possible. I will basically like to say a few words on five points, I'd say. Share what I really think about these points. And, um, well, re I'm relating to them because they, in a way, relate to uh, popular criticism around the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I, I'm not against that criticism. I'm against the fact that these words and thoughts that critics and skeptics uh, are using, they're using against, like, regular members of the Church, as if we're, uh, I don't know, for their... Fun, uh, forced to believe what other people think we believe, and that makes no sense. And still, people do that. Uh, yeah. So, like, the first point is, uh, we are being told in the church that this church is true. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, uh, what does it mean? Like, according to the doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ and uh, of Latter-day Saints, and what, how do I, would, el how would I elaborate on this one? So, basically, the statement, I believe this church is true, means I am in an organization, the name of which truly is church. This is sub-point number one. Sub point number two, it also re it also is related this statement to my faith that this church was truly established by God, and I'm not saying that the other churches were not. I'm not saying that there was no involvement of the Holy Spirit in these churches. There are also churches that I have a very powerful testimony of that they are under the God's protection, that their doctrine is very uh, important to our Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, them, these being, for example, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, the Orthodox Church, the Mariavid Church. Now everybody's wondering, what is a Mariavid Church? Look it up! I'm Polish, by the way, and this one is very important to me. Point number two, uh, the church is um, focused on the traditional concept of family and promotes the traditional views on family. This one is a total lie. Um, well, basically, uh, and that point was brought up some time ago by one of the, our apostles, uh, Jeffrey Holland, uh, don't be misled, these are his words, by the concept of traditional family. Uh, yes, we do have elements in our doctrine that make this doctrine seem very traditional when it comes to family, like uh, marriage being a union between a man and a woman, stuff like that, and so on and so on. But guys, actually, if you take a look at uh, the history of our religion, so very short, only 200 years, you can see that actually there were many, well, like weird things involved when it comes to uh, the concept of marriage and, and family. Polygamy, for example, 
being one of them. Uh, and there is also one more thing, and these are also uh, words of Apostle Holland. If you are focused in your life, and this is what church opposes, strongly opposes, um, like traditional way of living of a family, what mommy does, what daddy does, who is who in the family, and so on and so on. And uh, then basically you as a future mother and you as a future father, husband and wife, are taking away from yourself the opportunity to be yourself, to create your own independent family, to have your own household, to face the problems and difficulties your family was never aware of and didn't prepare you for. Mm -hmm. You're taking away the power of being a father and being a mother. And that's incredibly wrong. Um, in my uh, home country, in Poland, there is a saying that, uh, a, a horrible one, if something unusual happens in uh, somebody's home, family, uh, people would often say that you cannot comprehend it with your, I don't know how I actually render that in English, right? Dumb head, yeah? You cannot comprehend that in your dumb head. Well, if this is the way you call your head and your brain, <laughs> something's wrong, okay? Um, no. Having the power of God that we like to have, we want to have, is being prepared for everything. Is being able to endure the worst things and take from the life the most beautiful and marvelous and miraculous ones to experience the life fully and if you blindly follow the concept of traditional family traditional problems traditional duties at some point you will get to the moment when either you withdraw or kill yourself no. Traditional concept of family in many elements, aspects, yes, let's keep them, preserve them in general, so that it looks like from the American movies or like pop cultural family series nonsense. No, never, never. Uh, the Book of Mormon is a set of historical facts. No, it is not. I would basically say that uh, the investigation of what really the Book of Mormon is, uh, so-called golden plates and so on and so on, isn't done well. Uh, that's one thing. Another thing is that, well, the very same thing it might be said about the Bible. Basically, uh, now at this point, we know that, well, it, it's not even like about uh, the uh, facts in the Bible. We know that many facts in the Bible are not actually facts. They're just made up legends. Um, but still doesn't uh, neglect the fact that, and that's the truth behind the Book of Mormon and the Bible and other scriptures, that they convey the true doctrine. That's it. That's it. Um, a hoax, uh, plagiarism involved in creating the Book of Mormon. That's actually, well, there are two sides of the coin when it comes of the plate, golden plate. When it comes to that, uh, first of all, I would also like to say, and uh, I will probably one day make a special video on this one, that there are also plagiarisms in the Bible itself. And ancient Greeks would have noticed them. But what I just said does not neglect the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, and that's it. Um, point number four. Uh, the Mormon Church, as we are nicknamed, is an American product, an American church. Uh, well, I am Polish, I live in Spain currently, 
and I don't give a crap about uh, that church being American. I okay, this is where the HQ of the church is. This uh, like most uh, like many okay, a huge percentage of the church members are Americans, and American culture is very much present in. Um, the Mormon lifestyle, let's go this way, and it's wrong! <laughs> and the church admits that, and that's the funniest part. Uh, uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints being an American church is one of the worst things that ha that is happening to that church still, but um, uh, we're past that. Uh, uh, well, First of all, uh, one of the doctrines of the church is the doctrine of inclusion. We are learning from other cultures. We know that new um, inspirations will come. There will be new scriptures, and uh, like personally, I have it assuming that they will be there. They will be found all across the globe, and there will be prophets from all possible nations. And the last one, actually, uh, to uh, Put into one. Uh, Mormons have to blindly follow the prophet. Mormons believe that God is imperfect. Well, we don't have to uh, blindly follow the prophet. Uh, we can do it, um, but we actually shouldn't blindly follow anybody. Um, it's wrong. Mm, a great Polish Catholic priest, Józef Tischner, once said that if you blindly follow Jesus, at some point you start mocking him. Uh, so, no. Mm, and by the way, you know, like, you can always talk to our prophets and actually see that sometimes they get things wrong. Uh, and that's it. That's it. You know, uh, there are, it's their role to be prophets of God. And, like, it's a role of, I don't know, a chairman to be a chairman a woman to be a true woman, whatever, like the teacher to teach, right? But it doesn't mean that you will be perfect in that. Now, guys, another thing, like God being perfect. Uh, I mean, it is said by, the, it is said in the doctrine, especially that God is perfect. But yes, it's said in such a way that you have a feeling that actually God is imperfect. Uh, that like, it, like this idea of, of God who's exalting, that like he's getting like, Becoming a better being, like a, a, a god that's learning. Okay, that might get people confused at some point. I also think that we should not overtalk theology and religion all your life because life is too short for that. Take from your religion what's the best for you, what makes you a better person, because your life is freaking short, so live it the best you can based on what you learn from your religion. That's it. Okay, now, speaking of that, shortly, I would just say, okay, let me put it in an anecdote. Um, I would just say that I would rather believe, let so I put my faith in a wise being that is constantly develop, uh, exalting itself in its development, self-development, rather than a perfect God. And guys, it's because, let me put it this way, if uh, you believe that there is God, and you want to believe that God, who like, knows you best, uh, uh, you are important to him, his values though, are the most important to him, and you must follow them, and he also knows what you need. Well, he does not intervene, you cannot see him, but he's been constantly observing you. And I'm telling you, girl, this god of yours has got a van and a basement. Don't go to this church. Amen.